So today I kind of wanted to uh, discuss Mercury thermostats. So I'll just start with the basics of one of them. So you got the little um, temperature adjust here. You can sort of see the needle going up and down. It's really not a needle. It's really just that there. So anyway. Um, and you got a coil of spring behind this uh, needle here, which points to the temperature of the room. My room is actually 68 degrees. Um, this one's off just a little bit. I'm not surprised. Um, but it also could be my thermostat that's on my wall that's wrong. Uh, as this guy here tells me it's 73.8 in my room. 28% humidity. But... Who knows? I might need to recalibrate my thermostat. Anyway, so the internals of this. So this is just a cover plate. Um, makes it look a little bit more appealing and allows you to read these temperatures a little bit more easy. So on this side, you got mercury. So the pink wire here, or peach, tan, whatever color, um, is your common. Yellow is your heating. And then blue is your cooling. So as you adjust this, it moves the mercury back and forth um, and adjusts the temperature in your room. And the mercury is conductive, which closes contacts inside these wires, allowing it to turn on the system and redirects some of the and redirects current to here, 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 or here. It redirects it as needed. Uh, this coil of spring uh, expands and contracts, moving this bulb back and forth as it heats and cools the house. And uh, whenever it's satisfied, the mercury just chills in the middle. Um, very difficult to get it to chill in the middle uh, whenever it's not the temperature and you're trying to uh, get it to stay in the middle especially with shaky hands or uh if it's mounting on the wall it'd be just a little bit easier but still be a little difficult so once it redirects power from here it goes below into the circuit board so the circuit board here is actually pretty straightforward um some of these so you'll have a c which is common and then you'll have r or RC and RH. RC and RH should be jumpered. Um, let's see, you got an external transformer. And basically C and R is uh, power for your thermostat. So some thermostats require power, such as this one here. As you can see, I got set the heat. Whenever I turn it up, it doesn't turn on because this thermostat here requires power. I'll explain a little bit more in detail on this thermostat in particular. So, with these thermostats here, these uh, White Rogers, they come on different names, different under uh, different brands and stuff. But whenever that it calls for cooling, whenever this closes contacts, and it's set to cool, for example. So we'll go with cool, and we got it turned all the way down. It redirects power from these two terminals, RC and RH, runs it to G and Y. What that's doing is turning on the fan on your indoor unit, and it is also turning on your condenser or uh, outdoor unit. And that initiates the cooling cycle. And then whenever it's done, like whenever this guy gets satisfied, it turn it cuts voltage to G and Y. Now that's good and all, but these modern day units, you want to get all all the cooling out of the evaporator or indoor coil, the cold coil. So uh, some units have a delay a relay delay 
so the fan will continue running for about 40 seconds. 40, 45 seconds. It just depends on the type of unit or what unit you're using. Uh, my personal thermostat uh, has it built in. And I think I got to set for like 120 seconds and then it will shut itself off. Um, the fan. So whatever you have it set to heat. Close to the contacts. Just like cooling. And uh, this guy here is not satisfied. And it needs the heat. What will happen is RH and RC will redirect power. Uh, thermostat will grab voltage from here. Direct it to G. And w. Now if you have a gas furnace, what it will do is it will just redirect uh, these two terminals, this power, control power, to W and ignore G. Because gas furnaces, oil furnaces, those types of furnaces turn on automatically uh, by the control board whenever it gets hot enough so you don't get that blast of cold air. However, most systems, electric systems, will require this. Uh, most train uh, unit will not turn on heat until the fan is running, which it does that by the relay. If the thermostat doesn't call for heat, um, or excuse me, if it doesn't call for G, it won't turn on the heat strips because it's a, it's a safety, so the heat strips won't burn out. So, and then whenever it becomes satisfied, these, it cuts power to G, and W if G is not already cut. However, if you have it if you have the fan set to on instead of auto, the fan will never shut off until you flip it back to auto or you lose power. Either or or your motor burns out or something happens. But under normal working conditions, if this is set to on, the fan will continue to run until you flip it off. But overall this is probably one of the simplest thermostats that existed. Um, actually, it is, as far as I know. And it's pretty simple. I thought about trying to get it to work with a heat pump, my heat pump, but I kind of decided against it. Um, as I don't really want to bug with mercury too much. Uh, I gotta find a place. I probably will keep this one, just as a souvenir, I guess you could say. Um... But yeah, this is pretty straightforward. Um, obviously, there's no programming in one of these. <laughs> uh, however, I will probably eventually do a programming video of not one, not of this thermostat individually, but most likely uh, I'll do a programming video of this Emerson thermostat, and I will also do a programming video for how to set one of the, these guys up. Um, and I will also do a review of this thermostat here on how to uh, also program this one. Now, one note I would like to make about this thermostat individually, well, these two, they both have something in common that's not really very good, especially if the homeowner doesn't realize it. Or, yeah. If this isn't flipped all the way over... Now, they fixed these over the years, but it still has this one problem. If this switch here is not fully switched in either direction, this thing will not turn on the fan if you flip it over to heat or cool. So right now, it's calling for cooling, but it's not calling for fan because it's in the middle here. It doesn't look like it's in the middle... Whenever you look at the front, as you can see, I mean, right there it does, but it looks like it's set to auto, but it's not. It's actually in the middle here, a little bit in the middle, so it's not going to call for cooling. Or it's calling for cooling, but it's not going to call for fan, and that's going to freeze up your coil, and you're going to have a surface call. Just make sure it's fully set to auto or fully set to on. The surface that here does have that problem, too. It can be stuck in the middle easier than this one. So make sure it's fu fully switched. All your switches are always fully switched. So that should be good. Pardon that interruption. I had a phone call. So basically these thermostats do have that little problem. But 
just make sure it's in the fully on and or off position. Pretty sure it's right. So anyway, that con that concludes uh, how Mercury thermostats work. Uh, pretty straightforward. I'll discuss how electronic ones work. They're pretty straightforward. Um, there's really not much to talk about except it uses relays instead of mercury. So, yeah. That's uh, how a mercury thermostat works. Um, I will go ahead and do those videos eventually. Um, just give me some time and I'll go ahead and get them. So anyway, uh, thank you guys for watching. Um, until next time. Adios.